a topic which is very close to your heart and in fact I would say your heart is involved in this, uh, in this topic definitely and the topic we are going to discuss is about the ABO group system in humans and its inheritance and of course we have to deal with core dominance and particularities when we talk about inheritance of ABO group system in humans. Before going to the details of this topic, I would like to ask you one question and that is when you become aware of the presence of blood in your body? Have you thought like when we become aware of our stomach when we are hungry yes. or when we are very full then also we are aware of it or we are aware of our head when it starts aching. When there is headache, you know that yes, I have to do something with my brain, my head, there is problem. Mm -hmm. Same way, if the blood is doing I mean, such a good job for us, it is doing three important functions like regulation, protection and transportation. Transportation is a big job. It carries uh, nutrients from your upper digestive tracts to various parts of the body. It carries oxygen from our lungs to various parts of the body. It carries back carbon dioxide from various parts of the body to the lungs for purification. But it also carries the waste products from various parts of the body and takes it them to the liver for detoxification and to the kidneys for excretion. So, so many things the blood is doing, but we are not aware of it. Our blood vascular system is closed system. So blood is continuously flowing to heart. The heart is pumping the blood and it is flowing to arteries, arterioles, capillaries. Then it is collected by the mules, veins and it is brought back to the heart. Then it is purified in the lungs. Again, this is continuously going on. But we are not presence, we are not aware of the presence of blood in our body. And we become aware of the presence of blood in the body when we are hurt. We, oh, yes, when we are hurt. When when we are not hurt, when we fall sick, the doctor will advise us to go to the doctor and pathologist and get your blood checked. Why? Because the blood, the various levels of cholesterol, then uh, glucose, and then uh, uh, elements, various uh, I mean, sodium, potassium, and all those uh, electrolytes. So, various levels of all this is studied by the doctor in your blood and then that reflects health of your body and that is why the doctor will ask you to do the blood checkup or if there is any infection also malarial infection or dependazoma infection such infections will be seen or if there is increase in the certain types of blood cells because you become aware of the cancer when I mean some types of cancer you see the uh, some blood cells are also and some blood cells the number goes up in some types of cancers or if you are eosinophils, the number of eosinophils will increase. So you come to know about your body's health by blood checkup. So unless and until you don't fall sick, actually you don't worry about the blood. Or when you are young, you get a small cut also, you know, oh yes, there is blood flowing continuously through my body and uh, the blood gets clot. I mean, mm -hmm. the wound is healed automatically, naturally it happens. Because blood clotting mechanism exists. And then you meet with a big accident and a lot of blood is lost. Then, then what happens? Yes, the question I asked you just now and here. Right. So, blood transfusion has to be done. Okay. So, when blood transfusion is done, then Many people used to die and blood transfusion was done in older days also but before 1900 many people used to die because of blood transfusion. Instead of saving somebody's life because of blood transfusion the person used to die. Why was it so? So Dr. Carl Pansteiner he worked on this and he in laboratory he makes two types of blood. Sometimes there was no problem but sometimes 
plumping of cells occur. And this led him to discover the presence of antigens on the RBCs of the plant. And then he found out that if the RBCs having certain types of antigens, a person with certain types of antigens on his RBCs is given blood or the other type, then his body or her body will treat that blood or those antigens as foreign antigens and will attack them. As a result, clumping of cells takes place. And then that may lead to um, blocking your blood vessels and that may lead to death. And then after 1900, when this was discovered by Lansdiner, blood transfusion became safe and lots of lives were saved after that. So we should thank Dr. Carl Lansdiner for his discovery. Of course, he didn't label in detail all that APO and AB types of blood groups which we know now. If I ask anyone today, how many types of blood groups you know, even if there are few students or few people around me, I am sure that I am going to come across these four types of blood groups. Even if I ask 100 people, still the blood group number will remain same which is 4. So I would like to ask, Rashti, do you know your blood group? Yes ma'am. What is it? A positive. Okay. Karishma, mm -hmm. I don't know. you don't know your blood group? No. You are scared to go to the lab. <laughs> <laughs> what about B positive. B positive. B positive. A positive. A positive. A positive. A positive. A positive. A positive. <laughs> there is no one who is A B. No. Is there anyone who is O? <laughs> okay, but the number is small, so maybe we haven't come across the other groups. But you must have heard about these groups. A B group M. O group. Okay. 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 There is one more point I want to say that even if you are healthy and fit and fine, you should always go to the pathologist to check your blood group. If you are seeing your right card, your blood group is mentioned on the yes, college yes. ID. Yes. Why? Because you don't know whenever you require blood or somebody requires your blood, always it should be handy. And therefore, people are scared because they don't know how much blood will be withdrawn. Yes. <laughs> but let me tell you, it is just one drop. It is just one drop. See that picture yes. there? Just that drop of blood is enough. Two drops of blood are taken on slide and that blood will contain the RBCs, of course leukocytes, the WBCs are also there and platelets. Platelets help in clotting of the blood. Yes. WBCs protect your body from the germs and RBCs are having antigens on their surface. And the diagram shows the antigens there and here. So, a drop of blood on slide is mixed with anti serum, anti serum A and anti serum B. Mm -hmm. Those anti serum will contain those antibodies. And then, what happens when you mix A type of blood? Suppose you are carrying A antigen on your RBCs and you mix it with anti serum A. What will happen? Clotting. No. It will clot? Yeah. Or it will not clot? It will Anti serum A, anti, anti serum A will have antibodies of A. 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 Mm -hmm. And the antigens are A on the RBCs. Mm -hmm. So antigen A and antibody A. No so, problem. No problem? Mm -hmm. There will be problem? No mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. So, anti serum, remember one thing that this anti serum antigen now O group doesn't have any antigen that is what we say always so antigen A present on the RBCs the blood group is A now that person should not have antibodies A if there are antibodies A because the arrangement of antigen and antibodies like this lock and key arrangement so antigen A and antibodies A there will be clumping of cells. The antibodies and antigens will get locked with each other and there will be clumping of cells. Antigens present on the RBCs and antibodies present in the plasma. plasma. So lock and key arrangement is there and therefore clumping of cells will be. So a person with A group will have antigen A on the RBCs and antibodies B in the plasma. Whereas B group person will have antibodies A in the plasma and anti antigens B. B. Sorry. Long. Antigen B on the uh, RBCs and antibodies A in the plasma. 
Whereas person's blood group AB, when AB blood group is there, here you can see the RBC is A group person has antigen A and antibodies B in the plasma. B group person will have antibodies B on the RBC surface and antigen B on the surface and antibodies B A in the plasma. And AB person will have antigen A as well as antigen B. Sorry. A. A and this is B. B. Both the antigens. So antigen A and antigen B both are present on the RBC. Mm -hmm. And this person cannot have antibody A or antibody B. O. No. If there are no antibodies in the plasma, then only these RBCs will uh, remain in the plasma and the blood will flow continuously in the blood vessels. Otherwise, antigen a and antigen antibody sorry antigen A and antigen B both are there. And if both the antibodies are there, clumping of cells definitely will take place. Even if single antibody is there, antibody A is there still, clumping will say, take place because of antigen A present on the RBCs. Okay? The Vishma is confused there. No. Whereas O person doesn't have any antigen no. on the RBCs. Now this person will have both the antibodies in the plasma. Mm -hmm. Antibody A as well as B. antibody B. Both the antibodies are there. Now once we know how the blood groups are identified, actually if you go into the detail, then we say that O group person doesn't have any antigens on the RBC, but that is not true because H antigen is there. H antigen is present in O group as well as A group as well as B group. But in addition to H antigens, A person has sorry. A person has yes, this N acetate galactosamine mm -hmm. at the galactose end of the antigen. This is the only carbohydrate part of the antigen. The protein and lipid part is in the membrane. Suppose here there is RBC. And this part is projecting outside from the membrane. So this is the galactose end of the uh, antigen. And at the galactose end, you can see this N-acetyl galactosamine, which is present in A group person. Mm -hmm. So antigen A, this will be in addition to the H antigen, which is there in O person. Whereas person with B group, B blood group, has H antigen. See here, this is H antigen. And this is the galactose which is present at the end of this chain. So galactose and this is also galactose. So here you can see this galactose which is present in the B antigen along with H antigen. In A group along with H antigen there is this N acetyl galactosamine. Whereas O person has only H antigen. Now there is a blood group called Bombay blood group. You must have heard about Bombay blood group. You stay in Mumbai, which was called Bombay earlier. There, because 1 in 10,000 Indians will show Bombay blood group. Okay? So this H antigen is also not there in case of person with Bombay blood group. Even H antigen. So even if O person donates blood to this Bombay blood group person, this H antigen will be treated as foreign in his body. And antigen antibody reaction will take place and there will be clumping of cells. So one has to be very careful and therefore just a drop of blood is required to know your blood group. And therefore Karishma, tomorrow you should go to the pathology lab and just donate two drops of blood on a slide and find out your blood, which is very important. So we just go through all this different types of blood groups. Now, here, in the first column you can see the blood group, which is actually the phenotype. Now, if you speak in the language of genetics, we always use genotype, phenotype, gene, allele and all these terms. So, like the other characters in the body, like eye color, hair color, skin color, so many other characters are there, which we call them morphological characters. So, we call them phenotype, but this is also expression of a gene, so this is also phenotype blood presence of particular type of antigen on the RBCs which is controlled by genes. 
So the phenotype is O group. When the phenotype is O group or blood group is O, the antigens present present on the RBC is no antigens, that is H antigen we have seen, but not A and B. Definitely. Now that same person, O person, will have antibodies. Which antibodies? Anti A and anti B both antibodies in the serum. And this person can donate blood to A, B, O, and A. How is that? Because there are no antigens on the RBC. So when O person's blood is given to anyone, there is no, nothing to be treated as foreign by the recipient. And therefore, the blood will be accepted. And can receive blood from only O. Why? Because O person has both the antibodies. Because O person has both the antibodies, a person, if A person donates blood to O, antibodies A are there, see here, anti A antibodies there. If B person donates blood to him or her, anti B antibodies are there. So A person cannot donate, B person cannot donate, A B person no no, because both antigens would be entering foreign antigens to O person's body. And therefore, O person is universal donor, but can receive blood from only O. Whereas A group person here has a antigens on the RBCs, has anti B bodies in the plasma, and can donate blood to A person as well as A B person. Why A B person? Because A B person doesn't have any antibodies in the plasma, right? And therefore A antigen will not be treated as A antigen present on the A persons. And the uh, RBC will not be treated foreign by the AB person. Therefore, AB person can accept blood from A person. Now, A person can donate blood to A and Sorry, A person can receive blood from. You can donate blood to A and A B. And you can receive or she can receive blood from A person. Because A antigens when enter into A person's body, they will not be treated as foreign. And antibodies B are there. Right? So it doesn't matter. Then O person doesn't have any antigens. So naturally A person can happily accept O person. Now B group person, yes, we have antigen B on the RBCs, anti A antibodies in the plasma, and can donate blood to B person as well as A B person. A B person doesn't have any antibodies, both the antigens. So A B person will receive blood from A person, O person, as well as B. So AB is actually universal recipient. Because AB person has both antigens but no antibodies. And therefore, his body doesn't have any antibodies to attack any antigen. And therefore, A antigen happily received by him or her, B antigen, blood, as well as O, o person. Now, what about AB? AB person, the phenotype AB, has both the antigens, no antibodies, can donate blood to AB. AB. Why AB? Mm -hmm. Because both antigens are there. And both antigens, when they are there, O person will definitely treat them as having foreign. A person will also treat this. B. B is there. Because here you can see that B person has both the antigens. antigens. Mm -hmm. And they will go. It is not that you can separate B antigen, keep only A antigen on each RPC. That doesn't happen. And therefore the whole A, B antigen erythrocytes or RBCs, all of them will go along with the blood. And now the separating techniques are available, but the cells are separately given and plasma is separate. It is not that we remove antigens whichever we want and keep which okay which we want and remove which we don't want that way. So A B person is universal recipient and can donate blood to only A. So here it is clear the different four different types of blood groups. Four different types of so today just now we have seen that what is the blood made of? There is plasma, there are erythrocytes, there are leukocytes, erythrocytes also known as RBCs, red blood carpuscles, then leukocytes, white blood cells or white blood carpuscles and platelets. And then on the RBCs, 
there are antigens in the plasma, there are antibodies which are deciding the blood group of this person. Basically antigens are deciding when a baby is born, the baby is born with certain type of antigen. Okay. And antibodies are very soon they are found after the birth. So your blood group, ABO blood group system, in addition to ABO blood group system, which is important for blood transfusion because antigen antibody reaction is taking place because of the blocked in clearing between antigen and antibodies. Along with that, when I asked you your blood group, everybody said I am A positive or B positive or some no, there was no one who is O group here, but there are people with O group and AB group and they also say I am positive or I am negative, like that. So what is that positive and negative? Well, positive and negative is actually the Irish factor or one more type of antigen that is present on the RBCs. So along with A antigen, B antigen, there is one more antigen present which is called RH antigen. The name RH the terminology comes from rhesus monkey. Mm -hmm. For the first time it was found in rhesus monkey and then later on it was found in rabbits and then in human being. So it is known as RH factor or RH antigen. Now in blood transfusion along with the ABO blood groups, sorry, Along with ABO blood group system, RH factor is also important. And RH factor is also important during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But we will not go into details of that. But let us stick to the ABO blood group system. And since it is related to blood transfusion, we also should note that RH factor is also important during blood transfusion. And this RH factor was discovered by Lansdiener and Wiener in 1940. Now after doing all this, let us see who can donate blood to whom and who can receive blood from whom. Now you may feel that, oh my god, this is such a big complicated chart and I should buy heart it, but there is no need of doing that. Once you know how the blood groups are decided, antigens and antibodies, we talked about it. But then our genes are deciding what kind of antigen should be there on your RBCs. And once you know, which genes are there, definitely you will know the blood group. And you know that who is able to donate blood to whom we have already seen just now. Along with that, we have to just remember that oh, when we say it is positive blood, that means RH positive, that means RH antigen is present. And when we say that is B antigen actually, RH B antigen. And there is one more antigen present that is RH C antigen. Okay, but RH B antigen is responsible for uh, antigen-antibody reaction. That kind of antigen when it is present and then you get the antigen-antibody reaction when the opposite blood is given. So each blood group A, B, AB and O along with that you can see that plus sign or minus sign. All combinations you can see here and definitely a positive person, O positive person cannot donate blood to O negative person. Because Rh negative factor will create a problem. Rh negative person will not have that antigen. Okay? But one difference is that in ABO blood group system, along with antigens, there are also antibodies in the plasma. Whereas with respect to Rh antigens, you have Rh antigens on the RBCs, but you don't have antibodies for Rh by birth. Okay? But if you are exposed to Rh positive blood, suppose you are Rh negative and you are exposed to Rh positive blood, then only your body will produce antibodies against those Rh antigens. If you are not exposed to Rh antigens, then your body will not have antibodies against Rh antigens. So that is the difference between ABO system and Rh system. Now let us see the proportion of people in the world. So you can notice that there are maximum number of people with O group and A group. As compared to A group and O group, the number of B group people and O A group people are less. Very less. Yes. Okay. But of course, it, the percentage will change in various parts of the world. But this is general idea that A and O are more common than B and A. Now let us see the 
inheritance of this ABO blood group system. Now, whenever we talk about inheritance of characters, being a student of biology, what comes to your mind? The first name comes to your mind is Mendel, mm -hmm. father of genetics, and his experiments on pea plant, mm -hmm. right? But in your blood group system, you must have noticed, if you remember Mendel's experiment, the characters which were studied by Mendel were having only two alternatives. He said that a pair of contrasting characters are controlled by a pair of unit factors, which we call genes. So, one gene and its allele, right? So, the plants were either tall or short, or short, or they were having yellow seeds or green seeds. Or the seeds were wrinkled or round. So only two options. I mean, either this or that. That was a possibility. Whereas all this time we have been discussing ABO and AB. Four blood groups. Remember, more than two. Otherwise, if I ask 50 people their blood group, I should have got only two answers. Either A or B. Or some maybe B and O. Or B and A. AB is also different. Okay, according to Mendes law, certain characters are dominant and certain characters are recessive. Whereas here, A and B are together. Okay, remember this. So we will go into the details of that after a few, after a few minutes. But we have to remember that in ABO blood group system, there are three elements. Now which of these three elements you will see? And co dominance. Okay. So this is deviation from Mendel's yes. laws of inheritance. We are having more than either or options. So more than two alleles. A gene and allele with the same thing. Okay. So instead of one pair, there is one more. Three. So more than two. When there are more than two alleles for a gene, then that is called multiple alleles. So here we study co-dominance and multiple alleles. The inheritance of ABO blood group system when we talk about, we have to deal with multiple allelism as well as Co-dominance. Yeah. Now, who, who found out for the first time the genetic basis of ABO blood group? Lance described the ABO blood groups, fine. But then, the genetic basis of ABO blood groups for the first time successfully described by Bernstein in 1924. That means 24 years after the ABO system was described, antigen and antibodies described. Right? So, a series of alleles. There are three different alleles, which are these IA. Now, if we say that blood group allele is, uh, blood group gene is R, then for A blood group, we will write the superscript A. And for B blood group, we will write the superscript B. And the small i, which we have written here, is for the H antigen, O group. Okay. It's IA and IB, these are co-dominant alleles. Okay, they are dominant to R, small i, that is O group, H antigen and IA and IB are co-dominant. So whenever a person has IA and IB combination, his or her blood group will be AB. And if the combination is IA and small i, his or her blood group will be A. If IB and small i is the combination, the blood group will be B. And if small i, small i is the combination, the blood group will be O. So, allele is one of the variant forms of the gene present at a particular location on the chromosome. Now, when Mendel talked about unit factors or when we talk about gene and allele, actually, we know that in human being there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. When we say 23 pairs in the adult, in all cells of the body except for RBCs. We have to note one thing that RBCs do not have nucleus. They are disc like circular bodies. Right? And they don't have nucleus. Now, this 23 pairs of chromosomes, suppose this is first pair of chromosome, this is second pair of chromosome, like that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. Now, if I show chromosome number 9 here, Suppose this is my chromosome number 9. I am talking about chromosome number 9 because the gene for ABO blood groups, that is for the production of this antigen A, antigen B, or which antigen, this, and this gene is present here on chromosome 9. 
Now, all these chromosomes, they have centromeres. Okay. So, on the long arm of this, chromosome 9, there will be the IA gene, for example, and there will be its allele IB. Now, all these homologous chromosomes, each chromosome will have many genes, and the allele for those genes will be present on the homolog. Right? So, there will be genes controlling certain characters and the contrasting characters, the other character, like for example, like Mendel said that capital T gene is there and the small t gene is there, okay, the unit factor. So, he studied seven pairs of contrasting characters which were controlled by genes. Fortunately, those genes were present on seven different pairs of chromosomes. Seven pairs. As a result, I mean, there was no problem in putting forth the law of dominance, law of segregation, and law of independent assortment for him. Okay, but later on, Morgan and Bridges, they did lots of experiments with Drosophila and they said that actually there are many genes in one chromosome. The chromosomal theory of inheritance was put forth. And now, of course, we know human genome project is complete. So we know that there is DNA and a particular sequence of bases in the DNA molecule performing a particular function is called a gene. Right? All these things we know now. And this DNA along with the histone proteins, they are present in these chromosomes. And these chromosomes are present in the nucleus of a cell. And like that, there are many cells in a multicellular body. So all these cells are having all these 23 pairs of chromosomes. Okay? And now when we talk about chromosome number 9, this IP gene is here and its allele is here. Now suppose this is Drashti. Who is whose blood group is A? Or oh, sorry, A, for example. Okay, there is another person who whose name is John. This is chromosome number nine for John. Yeah. Okay. Now John has I A and small I. So his blood group is A. A. Suppose there is Shabana. And on chromosome number nine of Shabana, there is small I and small I. So, Shabana's blood group is O. Okay? Now, suppose there is Shrikan. Now, Shrikan has IB gene and small i gene. So, his blood group is B. Okay? Now, we have seen that there is A group, there is AB group, there is O group, and there is B group. Like that, of course, many people would have. Hmm. Either O or A or A B or B group. Now, purpose they have written Shrikan, Shabana, John. John. I can write some more names according to various uh, practice search in various languages. The different names are given by different people. Of course, some people keep other names also from other languages. So, why I have written these names? I could, have write, I could have written the name, actual names of yours. Why is it so? Because we fight, we hurt people, we injure people so that they bleed to death. But then we are united by the types of blacks. So, Shavana, Shrikan, John, and Rashti, all of them, as long as their blood groups match. They can donate blood to each other, they can receive blood from each other. Mm. Right? So, we fight for each other. We always say that there is no blood relation and uh, his blood is Khandani and blah blah blah. We talk about. Fortunately, our Hindi movies show both. Mm. They show fighting for religion, for casteism, and many things. But at the same time, they also show blood transmission and one religion person giving blood to some other person of the other religion and all that, they, that also they show. But then we should remember when we fight for religion or caste and other things, we are united by blood, we are united by the DNA present which we have. We also know that there is hardly any difference between the DNA of mouse and DNA of human being. So, we should not be cruel to animals also. We are linked to them by the presence of DNA as genetic material. Now, what is the role of these alleles? IA allele produces antigen A. 
ideal in reduces antigen B, small i produces no antigen that is F antigen which is the base for A, I A as well as I, I mean A antigen as well as B antigen. So a small i is the recessive one because it retains just the H and doesn't add the lactose or an acetyl the lactose transplants. And I A and I B are co-dominant co which means an individual with genotype I A I B will produce both antigen A and B. B. Now this is our chromosome 9, actual chromosome 9 and this is the mapping. So these are all the various loci which are shown here, all these. Now this is, this is the locus, 9Q34.1, 9Q34.1 is the locus for the antigen A, B and H antigens. Now we may feel that this gene is actually controlling the production of these antigens A and B and all that but actually it is controlling the production of this enzyme galactosyl transferase this galactosyl transferase enzyme is adding that galactose I showed you the chain earlier here let's go back yeah here this this addition of this and acetylgalactosamine or addition of this galactose, the bonding between this galactose and this galactose or this galactose and n acetylgalactosamine is decided by this galactosyl transferase. And this galactosyl transferase, this IA gene, IA gene, IA gene will allow the bonding between. Galactose, this galactose and N acetyl galactosamine. Whereas IB gene, which is here, IB gene will allow a little different kind of galactosyl transferase, the bonding between this galactose and this galactose, which is added at the end of this antigen chain. Okay? So actually this enzyme is doing the job of bonding between these. So addition of these two will be done by this enzyme and that enzyme production will be controlled by the gene present on this chromosome 9 at 934.1 position here. Okay. So we inherit our genes from our parents, these 23 pairs of chromosomes present in human body in all cells of the body that is a diploid condition but when gametes are formed we know very well from these 23 pairs from each pair one chromosome by the meiotic division which takes place during gamete formation oogenesis as well as spermatogenesis so when sperms are formed spermatogenesis takes place and the sperms will have only 23 chromosomes and not 23 pairs whereas the ovum will also receive only 23 chromosomes and not 23 pairs. Now 23 pair, uh, chromosomes from the egg and 23 chromosomes from the sperm will again come together. The chromosome number 1 and chromosome number 1 of these two will come together to form the first pair. Then 2 and 2, the second pair, third pair like that again the 23 pairs are formed. Now depending upon which chromosome is there, the sex chromosome and the sperm, whether it is X or Y, accordingly the sex chromosome combination will be produced. The female gamete will always transfer the X chromosome to the zygote whereas male gamete can transfer either X or Y. Accordingly, the zygote will be produced again along with the 23 pairs of chromosomes out of which one member from each pair is coming from mother, one member from each pair is coming from father. So maternal and paternal chromosomes come together to form 23 pairs. Now of these now, we, you must have realized that that chromosome 9, which we have shown just now, one chromosome 9 is coming from mother, one chromosome 9 is coming from father, and that is how the gene for antigen A or antigen B, whatever, or O will be transferred from your father or from your mm -hmm. mother to you, which they have received from their parents, of course. So, here we see the 
phenotype, the antigens on the RBC, the antibodies in the plasma, and now we have added this genotype. So O person genotype, both recessives. Then only they can express together. H antigen only will remain. Antigen A or antigen B will not be produced on the RBCs of this person, and his or her blood group will be O. Whereas IA, IA, and that is the genotype. Antigen A will be produced on the RBCs, and the person's blood group will be A. And of course, antibodies B will be there in the plasma. Now, when IB, IB is the combination, person's blood group will be B because of B antigen, and the antibodies will be A. Now, A B person, why it is produced? Because the genetic combination is I A. One is coming from father and one is coming from mother. Okay. So, both of them have contributed these genes to their child, and therefore the child's blood group is A B, having both antigens A and B, and no antibodies in the plasma. Both are dominant, that's the reason. Both are dominant, and that is why we call them as co dominant. Co dominant. Mm -hmm. So, whenever I A is present along with I B, both will express, that means both the antigens, antigen A as well as antigen B, both have those, and therefore we call them co dominant genes. So, by studying ABO blood group system, we have come across the co dominance, complete dominance also, because IA is dominant to I, small i, O group. A group is dominant to O group, B group is also dominant to O group. Right. So that is complete dominance. Whereas A and B, I A and I B between I these two, there is co-dominance, and therefore both antigens are produced. And we have also come across one more deviation from Mendel's laws, that is multipolarity. There is no either or option, but there are three of it actually: I A, I B, and small i. In various combinations, they produce co groups. Now here there is a problem. One problem we will solve here. If the father now I have already solved the problem, but I'll ask you one more problem which you will solve. But let us understand this: a father has type A blood, a mother has type AB blood. Based on the genotypes of their children, is the father IA IA or IA and small i? Because IA is dominant over small i, completely dominant. So even if the genotype is IA and small i, still the blood group will be A. So the father can be homozygous IA IA or heterozygous IA and small i. So let us see gametes. The mother's mother is A. So mother can contribute IA and IB gene. Okay. Father is A. So it can be either IA IA or IA and small i. Right. So but the child's blood group, I mean the offspring's blood group is given, which is IA IA genotypes are given, not blood group. IA IA. Okay, one. I A and small i. Now, when we say I A and small i, then the father has to have here only it becomes clear that father has to have this genotype. If he had I A gene here, that means if his genotype was I A I A, this small i would not have come here. Because the offspring genotype is given, we automatically come to know the father's genotype. Okay? Now let us solve next problem. That you will solve. Shall we write on that board? Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to write? Mm -hmm. Rusty? Mm -hmm. You want to write? Mm -hmm. Come. So same way you write the red square. So let us write the woman's blood group is A. First of all we have to write what is given to us? So the woman's blood group is blood group, right? First to write blood group, then write the genome. Yeah. Now let us write the genotype later. Now first, what is given to us? The man's blood group is B. So below that you can write man's blood group is B. And the potential offsprings is asked. So what type of blood groups their children can have? That is the question which is asked. So A person 
Mm-hmm. So write the genotype from both. To both the options you have to write. Mm-hmm. Homozygous as well as heterozygous. Yes. If they are homozygous, what are the options? If they are heterozygous, what are the options? Okay. The other option is IA and small i. Right. Then the man's blood group is B. So he can be homozygous IB IB or he can be heterozygous IB and small i. Connect square you have to show. Now there is no point. I think everybody can understand without writing. If they are homozygous, then the possible blood group is only AB. AB. Isn't it? Should we write? Let us write. Let us write. If they are homozygous, first write on the left hand. Let us write here. Everything will fit. Yeah. Because they will produce, I mean, the woman will produce only IA. G and the gamut is IAG and the man will produce IB so IA, IB, AB2 that is only possible if they are heterozygous then A, B, AB and O correct all four possibilities are there if both are heterozygous if one is heterozygous and other is not then one option will be dropped out so basically you know if if you know how to how it is to be done, then it becomes very easy. Once you know the relationship between the I A I B and small i genes, and which is dominant and which is predominant, it becomes very easy. You can solve any kind of problem. Then there will be a possibility that if these two are the present or these two are present. Yeah, then male is homozygous, and female could be that, Yes, that so all four combinations will be possible. No, in that case, all four will not be possible. If both are heterozygous, then all four are possible. Okay. Yoga. O one to try? No. Everybody yes. understand this? Yes. With O group, na ma. Another hetero or O one, then we say it's no O. O one. I I. If one is homozygous and another is heterozygous, then O group cannot be produced. Huh. She is very right. So I think everybody has followed. If one is heterozygous and another is homozygous, O group will not be possible. Other possibilities will be. If both are heterozygous, then O is also possible because. Both may contribute that small i gene by a gametes in that case. If both are heterozygous, mm-hmm. right? Now the next problem you can solve at home. What are the possible blood types of offspring of a cross between individuals that are A, B, and O? Okay, you solve it at home. So now what what did we see today? Different components of blood: plasma, antigen, antibodies, RBCs, WBCs, platelets, and all that we have seen. Then, what is ATO blood group system? The antigens present on the RBCs, antibodies in the plasma, and agglutination taking place. The coupling of cells is they are not matching, and that causes a problem in blood transfusion. And then we saw who can donate blood to whom, who can receive blood from whom, blood transfusion, and how RH factor is also important in blood transfusion along with ATO blood groups. Then we saw inheritance of ATO blood group system. We saw that the grammatical alleles. There are three elements: I A, I B, and small i. I A and I B are co-dominant. Ah, sorry, they are dominant to small i. So their complete dominance is there, and co-dominance is seen with I A and I B. Then possible genotypes for A, B, A, B, and O phenotypes we have seen. Okay, and we also solve some problems based on a biological system. Now, what we should remember. Now we always talk about ATO system and RA system because we are worried about blood transfusions, isn't it? There is one more blood group system that is MN, and in case of disputed paternities, the MN blood group is taken into consideration, and that may help in solving some problems of paternity cases. But nowadays, of course, genetic analysis and DNA analysis is done, so no more people depend on blood group analysis for deciding the paternity cases. Now. The genes for all these various blood groups are present on autosome. So some are present on nine for I R H factor. The gene is present on chromosome number one. There are some genes present on seventeen chromosome, eighteen chromosome number eighteen, seventeen, nineteen, and all that. But gene for A B O is on nine chromosome nine. The A B O blood group system and R H factor important for blood transfusion that we should remember. A B O blood groups are best examples of co-dominance and multiple alleles. 
but one should not think that these are the only examples of co-dominance and multipolarism. Multipolarism is also seen in other animals like Drosophila, rabbit sport color in rabbits mm. or uh, wing types or eye types, eye color types in Drosophila. So all these other animals also show multipolarities and they, some of the examples like ladybird beetle, it also shows co-dominance. So there are other, other animals which also show radiations from Mendel's Drosophila. Three alleles, I, I, B, I, I, A, I, B, and small i are controlling A, B of the ecosystem, and I, A, and I, B are codominant, and small i is associated with This is all which we should remember. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed. Yes. Was that it? Was that Good.